to the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. I'm Ruth and I love to knit. It is Wednesday the um, 8th of November 2023 and I'm coming to you as always from the southwest of England in Devon just on the border of Cornwall where I live with my husband Nigel and our two children Samuel who is 13 and Eva who is 15. Um, you're very welcome here this morning it's morning where I am anyway, um, and I hope you'll enjoy your time spent with me. This is going to be not a real podcast. <laughs> I'm a figment of your imagination. No, um, I have um, a few things to say, but I don't want to call it a numbered podcast. Um, as always, it's November in England. <laughs> it's foggy, misty, rainy, wet out there, so the lights are on overhead shining off my grey hair as usual I even have one to the side today but I hope you'll be able to see what I'm going to show you and talk about anyway also if you're um, a regular watcher of my podcast you'll know we have two wee dogs and for some reason today they don't seem to be getting on too well and there might be a lot of barking and growling but um, hopefully I'm at the far side of the house so hopefully you won't hear it too much but I apologize if there's a bit of animal noise uh, <laughs> involved in the podcast and hopefully it won't set your dogs off too. Anyway as I say you're really really welcome here this morning. Um, I have some chat about a yarn festival I went to at the weekend, some of the goodies I bought and a wee bit about um, a de-stash that I have got up on Instagram as I'm a great believer in yarn in and yarn out. Uh, but that'll come later. I just want to showcase a few wee bits and pieces that are on there. A lot of it's already gone, thank you very much. Uh, but there's a few wee bits that might show up better on uh, the TV screen than in my rubbish photographs. Anyway, I have my coffee. Hopefully you've got some too. See if it comes, turns up. Be kind, be happy it was a birthday present a few years ago from my husband. It's a good big mug of coffee this morning, um, midweek. <laughs> early starts, late nights, it's definitely needed. And the woolies are on, the winter woolies are on. Um, this, we, I only got them out mid last week. Um, and uh, I, past me is very happy that I laundered them all before I put them in, because they all smell lovely now. Um, and it's cozy, the heat's not on, so, it, but it's cozy in my wee tiny craft room slash spare room. And um, yeah. Stop waffling, Ruth. Huh? Stop waffling. Take a sip of my coffee. So the sweater I'm wearing is an Isabel Kramer. Um, from the... Oh, gosh. I actually got it out because I knit it oh, at the beginning of the year. And I couldn't remember. I keep these wee um, craft... It's not very It's not very fancy. It's not very neat. But I keep wee, um, a record... Of my knits. My husband says I have more pictures of my knits than I have of my children, which could be true. And this is the Helmi, H-E-L-M-I by Isabel Kramer from the 52 Weeks of Easy Knits. Um, fantastic book if you're looking. It's not, um, I thought, oh, this is a beginner, a beginner book. It's got some fantastic um, patterns that I've actually passed it on to someone else because I have knit several things out of it. Um, if you're looking for a Christmas present for somebody who's maybe not quite beginner but wanting to um, you know stretch themselves a tiny wee bit it could be a really good book um, for you to buy for somebody. There's loads in it right from most basic things to nice things like this. Um, different bits and pieces but yes I would recommend it and the, the navy it's navy is Hey Mama Wolf in the colorway dark indigo and the pink can you see it there's two actually two tones of pink sorry this um desk chair bangs can you even see yeah you just about can see and i just used i think woolly knit see yep and i'm gonna buy again and um it's so comfortable to wear i have it on over a dress suit but you can see the <laughs> line of my sleeves but Oh, it's so comfortable. Um, it's just a um, ribbed end. I did it, I wouldn't say cropped, but did it slightly, slightly shorter for to wear with, for to, for to wear with dresses. That's really good English. To wear with dresses and just the same on the sleeve. 
This yarn, um, I got it from a, a D stash. It was an absolute steal, um, but oh my goodness, it came off of my hands. I had black hands, navy black hands, for the whole time I was knitting it. But once I wash, when I washed it, hardly anything came out in the wash, so I don't know what happened. And um, I just think it's simple. Um, I think there were short rows in it. I think there must have been. Um, maybe there weren't if it was in an easy I can't remember um so I don't write that many detailed notes um but yes I really like it anyway that's a lot about what I'm wearing I put some um coffee syrup in this and it's really nice what flavor vanilla chai maybe I can't remember that's lovely anyway you didn't come here to watch me slurp coffee so I'll put that away now. Um, yes, so I wanted to talk to you about the yarn show I went to at the weekend. And these are the photographs I took. Yes, none. I didn't take any photographs. <laughs> didn't take any video. Uh, lots of people did. So if you want to go on into Instagram and go to Southwest Stitch Fest, or Stitch Fest SW, I think it is, on, um, on Instagram, um, it was in Newton Abbott, which is about 50 minutes away from me. Um, so I went and I took my daughter. She she uh, volunteers in the library in Oakhampton. And I took her there on Saturday morning. And then I nipped up to Hannah's house, my lovely friend, um, Hannah of Hannah's Happy Space. If you watch my podcast, you should watch hers. Hannah, Hannah's Happy Space here on YouTube. Um, and we went together. And she braved my driving. And it was rotten weather some t at some points but um we we made it in one piece and i know many times we said through the day we should really take video we should really take photographs we should really do it and i thought we should have at least taken one in the car of us leaving or you know if there's no photograph it didn't happen but we didn't even do that sorry um just to prove that i definitely was there uh this is this is all this is all i have <laughs> stitch fest on the saturday it was on saturday and sunday in the Newton Abbott uh, race course. Um, I have some notes here or I will be all over the place, won't I? Let me get them up. Um, yeah. Um, and I had booked to go last year, but I was still, I'm not great in crowds and I was still a bit iffy after the whole COVID thing and haven't been stuck in the house for so long. I thought the very last minute I decided not to go. And I didn't regret this. I didn't regret the decision, but I'd said, right, definitely this year I want to go. And I'm so glad I did. And I would definitely go back again another year. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I sound very coldy this morning. So we picked up one of these as soon as we went in, which was great. Um, beautiful photographs, all the autumnal colours, isn't it? Um, so always ask about accessibility. <laughs> the main problem was no fault of the, the um, yarn show organisers, the weather. Um, the, there was plenty of parking, but at least a quarter of the car park was a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing you can do about it but I would imagine if you were trying to get out of um I didn't see special disabled parking but I'm sure at a race course there would have been um but I, if we had to do a little detour around several cars to get to a place where we weren't sort of ankle deep in water and um, so I'm sure that would be a problem but uh, the actual parking itself there was plenty um it did say there was people to direct you but it was only a man at the gate that we saw but it wasn't a problem at all Main problem was the signage for the actual race course. We went down, <laughs> we went down where we saw the sign and we ended up at a gym car park. Now, I did wonder if that was a sign that we should have been going to the gym and not a yarn festival, but yet yeah, we turned around <laughs> and went a good bit down the road before we found another entrance to it. And of course it was easy enough then. It was a wee walk, like, not a wee walk very very short walk to the actual entrance um but uh it and when we were doing it it was dry thankfully but looking out the window at some points there was torrential rain so i was very thankful we got in dry because that would have been miserable um there were three rooms no four rooms i suppose really um two large ones off either side of the entrance one upstairs uh there was a lift um and uh the, the cafe restaurant was upstairs too I didn't feel 
there were there was plenty of food. Uh, we got lovely sausage rolls. Um, and oh, you could have got everything from chocolate cake through to a curry, I think. Um, but the way that it set out definitely wasn't wheelchair friendly. And if somebody wanted to get out past you, you had to stand up and move for them. It wasn't a problem for us, but I would imagine it maybe could have been a problem for anybody who had accessibility issues. Um, there were several people in wheelchairs there um, with electric wheelchairs, the bigger ones, um, and just moved out of the way when they were coming. I don't know if, how accessible each booth was. There were some big ones, there were some smaller ones. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, but um, it was all flat. <laughs> it wasn't hard to get to places and hopefully anybody in a wheelchair did still enjoy and have a good day. Anyway, so Stitch Fest. 2023 I went on the Saturday with Hannah and we didn't get there it started at 10 but obviously I had to drop my daughter off first and I'm very very glad I didn't go for the opening from 10 from 9 to 10 I think maybe was a quiet hour or is it 10 to 11 don't know but we got there probably about half 11 I want to say maybe 20 past 11 and it was still quite busy um and um yeah a bit had to sort of you know wait till somebody came and for you to get through and stuff um but it was great to see so many people there i'm not complaining at all and it was just an absolute overwhelm of color and the first the first booth in was all neons it was kind of like whoa um folkstone harbour yarns um but there was everything there you could have imagined um i think I think um, now looking at photographs and we clips of films, I think, I don't remember seeing that. I don't remember seeing, was that there? So I wish I could go back and have another look because I think I actually, well, when you see what I bought, you'll think I didn't miss anything. But I actually missed quite a few things um, in hindsight. But, excuse me. Um, yes, so we did try and do a walk around first. That was what we agreed on. Um, but I got about halfway around the first room, saw something. It was the only one left, <laughs> so I had to buy it. And after that, it was it was free for all. Do anything. Um, Hannah got some lovely stuff too. I'm sure she'll show it on her podcast. Um, she was a bit more um refined than me, maybe. I don't know. I didn't buy anything full price, like a bargain. But as my father-in-law says, is it really a bargain if you don't need it? But sure. He was the one who sent me the money, to, so it's his fault. We'll blame him. Anyway, there was this brochure and it was great because it told you all the um the vendors, although there was two or three didn't that couldn't come for COVID and different reasons. Um and it was very easy to, to find your way around. There was a map, really well laid out maps. That's just one of the pages, there's two pages. Um, there were talks, there were classes, but we didn't go to those. Um, and we were there till we were there a good three or four hours, maybe. I'm trying to think what time we came home at. Maybe even longer, because we did get lunch. Um, and we just had a really good time. And so many people came up and said hello. <laughs> I was a bit embarrassed. <laughs> Hannah thought it was hilarious. Um and uh, Beryl, who we also met up with, thought it was really funny too. Every, literally for a few, uh, every few steps, somebody was saying, are you Ruth? Hi Ruth, I watch your podcast. Some people took photographs and my lesson from those photographs is to make my uh, sleeves longer in my short sleeve um, jumpers because you could see my arms for my large arms a bit too uh, clearly. It took up most of the photograph, but I met so many lovely lovely people and i really really appreciate you saying hello it was just lovely and um i met a lot of um, people who made eye contact as if i know you and then looked away but for those who who spoke to me thank you so much one lady even asked if she could feel my jumper i wore the um uh toast tea that i knit in the the jmc brett uh, shush yarn and they were selling it at the show so she wanted to see what it was like knit up it was perfect for the iron show uh the iron show wasn't too warm although there was a you know a few a few flushes through the day um but it was just perfect for the iron show um to not too hot not too cold so um the um, 
There was one person, Becca, who came up to me. She was wearing the most amazing yellow coat. Um, and she said, my mum loves you or adores you or something like that. So hello to um, Becca. And I've forgotten your mum's name. I thought I'd written it down. Where did I put it? Um, Patricia. Patricia. So, and Becca actually has um, an Etsy shop called Moth and Found. And she um, makes the most beautiful project bags. And there's not many on her site at the minute. But she did do a show, her very proud mummy um, told me she did do a show where she sells them. So I hope, Becca, if you're watching, you'll make some more because I would love one. And um, maybe um, other people will go to your, your... There are some bags on her Etsy shop, but um, her I would imagine her full um, range isn't there. So anyway, the reason, one of the reasons I'm looking at my notes, one of the reasons I'm actually doing this podcast extra is because I've had a few comments about my acquisitions and they weren't very nice. <laughs> um, so I've decided to do it this way. So if you don't want to watch acquisitions, you don't have to watch acquisitions. I'll always pop them in here and there through uh, my podcast, especially if somebody gifts me something because it's only right to thank people. Um, but if it's not your bag, if it's not your cup of tea, just move on. Just nobody needs unkind comments. <laughs> um, if I was saying something that was outright bad or horrible or, um, I don't know, nasty, okay, definitely criticise me and um, talk to me and help me change. But because I have a few acquisitions, um, I don't think it's hurting anybody. And anyway, there you go. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Um, looking at my, my um, um, but, 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 yes, we didn't take any video. <laughs> And probably quite good because every time we saw a nice yarn, both me and Hannah went, oh, 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 oh. And there were noises and there was smelling of the yarn. So probably I would have had to dub over with, with music if, I, if we'd done it. With, it was quite, I don't even think we realised we were doing it until we both kind of laughed and people were looking at us, you know. <clears throat> um... Let me see. Oh, the other thing was we nearly missed a whole room. <laughs> it was only when we went for lunch that we looked at the brochure properly, like normal people do, and realised there was a whole room you had to go outside to. Again, perfectly accessible with all the new vendors who hadn't been at the show before. But honestly, I kind of felt they were put on the you know on the edge. I don't know if you know normal people would have obviously looked at the map and realised we're not normal. Um, but. It was much calmer and quieter in there, but I don't know if it was because people didn't realise it was there. Um, I don't know. I don't know how the vendors felt, but it can. I don't know how you would have fitted them into the main rooms anyway, because they were used to capacity. Um, but, um, yeah, we didn't buy anything in there. I don't think, but we had a good look. There was a lot of, you know, there was everything from spinning stuff, fibre to wool to ready-made stuff. You know, there was everything. Um, and again, in the whole show, there was everything from sheepskin rugs to felting kits to um, anything fibre related was there. Oh, um, um, dog leads made from wool, uh, dog beds made from wool, um, dog collars. Oh, there's no point in me getting one for my dog that would eat through it. Um, but yes, everything was there. It was just a riot of colour smells textures everything oh there was wood wooden things you can imagine um there was you know sock blockers there was spindles there were there were people um demonstrating spinning yarn there upstairs there was um several sort of spots where you could make pom-poms you could learn to knit you could oh there was there was everything um and oh the knitwear the samples what people were wearing. There was one woman, and I took a picture of her back. Hope she did. She won't know, because her her sweater was just stunning. And thankfully, it was the sort of day where you could wear knitwear. The last few yarn shows I've been to, it you would have melted if you had any knitwear on. So, and um, that was really fun to see, from shawls to hats to um scarves to sweaters some people I even saw somebody in knitted leggings so that was really good fun to be with your people do you know what I mean it was just really good fun so is that enough about I can't think of anything else oh just but I was so tired when I got home oh my goodness it's not bad for me I did I drove but I just 
for my American viewers, that's literally around the corner, isn't it? Um, 50 minutes away. Um, but just uh, both Hannah and I said we were just wrecked when we came home. Um, I took knitting but left it in the car because the, where the um, well, seating areas that I saw where you would have sat down and, and knit, uh, they could have been there because as I say now, I'm thinking, did I see that? Was that there? Um, and it felt a bit hurried um in the cafe you know because people wanted to wanted to sit and we didn't go into after one so uh but that's not a complaint really it's um it's fine because we wanted to get back to <laughs> looking at all the yarn anyway so um what did i buy okay hope you've got your projects with you and you've got something to and where i put this i can still see the names of i bought nearly purposely fully Four projects. Now, if you'd watched my last podcast, you know I'm knitting, I'll put a picture of it here, I'm knitting the ephemeris shawl for my mum for Christmas and she wanted it red and navy. But on the Friday night before, she messaged me and she'd found one of her winter coats and said, actually, could you do it um, black and um, red instead? And I had black in my stash. So that started, but I'll not show you it this time. I'll keep it for next week when I do my normal normal podcast um and um so i didn't need to spend any money on her <laughs> her yarn and actually in hindsight the stall that said they were bringing the uh, kinross four ply yarn didn't have the colors i needed anyway so i didn't feel bad about that so instead i bought I prop this up because it's got the names of the patterns i need right i've got my knitting here <laughs> I've got my knitting. Still, still not any further on. This is my dust them off mal um, knit and I have spent hours knitting this and it doesn't feel like it's any longer. But the good news is I've picked, well, Sarah and Hannah picked uh, the colour scheme for the, for the yoke. So put that down the floor. I thought I would knit while I was talking to you, but not a chance. <clears throat> so, I, sorry about the noise. If I, I have a table adorned here. Uh, right, as I said, I didn't spend full price on anything, but if you buy a lot of stuff, it still costs money, didn't it? So, um, I can't remember. Well, I'll show you what, um, can I remember which order I bought these? And I think I can, I think I can. Put that. Well, first of all, this came in the post from my lovely friend, Chloe. So I have to show you that. I'm sure you all know Tilly Flop. No yarn is left. In this vehicle overnight, it's for the back of the car and my husband doesn't appreciate it, but it's, it's mostly my car. I mostly drive it. It's the family car and that'll go in my car um, now that I've shown you it. Thank you very much, Chloe. Um, actually, her husband saw it and she, she said, so thank you, George. <laughs> so we went, oh, this is about halfway around the first room. So I made it halfway around before I bought anything and this display was just stunning. It had shawl cuffs shawl clips um and i was trying to remember the name of it and um because there was no way i tried to pick up cards if i bought anything and i think it's philipsy this one here philipsy you can see a uh, drop spindles there um and it says hand turned from wood from drop spindles to nostopenas magnetic pin bowls to seam rippers spinners or orifice hooks um, to scissor stands, crochet hooks to Gertie, our giant circular loom. You will also find shawl pins and fibre necklaces, sheep and yarn related glass Xmas Christmas decorations. Our fibre fantastic gift bags are a great present for someone who wants to have a go at a different fibre related craft. You will get in the bag crochet hooks, knitting needles, drop spindle, knitting Nancy, small felting kit. You will also find all the yarn you need for each craft. Our favourite product is Gertie, our giant knitting Nancy. I don't remember saying Nancy, but probably because I hold. So um, she is on www.philipsy.co.uk. Pause your screen. And her stall was fantastic. But this is what I saw and it was the last one, so I had to buy it. Look at that. It's a shawl pin. Oh, she had everything from Christmas trees to, oh, Hannah, what else was there? Christmas trees to hearts 
to um, wash it, everything. And these were only six pounds. I thought that was very good. So you just put your shawl and put that through. Won't be everybody's cup of tea, <laughs> but I love it. So check her out if you're in the UK. I don't know if she does um, internationally, <clears throat> if you're a spinner or, um, but she had these all laid out and all in wee, lovely wee bags. And um, yes, there was another woman looking. There was two left, one on one stand and one on the other. So I took that one and I think probably the other lady took the other one, but I absolutely love it. So that was my first purchase. Um, then, uh, don't think I got anything else in that room. No, I managed to get out of that room before, <laughs> before we bought anything else. Um, we stuck in there was Camel's Yarns. We did spend quite a bit of time in there, but it was bunged. It was a big double um, um, stand, but it was bunged and um, we kind of eyed up a few bits and pieces. Um, but we did come back there. And then uh, we made our way out and into the second room. So the hallway and then the second room. And Pixie Yarns was in there. Um, who else would you, would you know? Um, I didn't find the lighting was super good on the side that Pixie Yarns was on. But um, I'm sure she sold loads. I did see the Twin Set and Pearls, their new sock pattern. So that was that was bought. Um, it's fantastic. And the yarn they used was beautiful. But I didn't buy the yarn because I may have some, you know, in moustache. Um, Excuse me, and then in the middle, just a very insignificant little circular table, no big um signage or big you know dramatic thing, just this wee table with yarn piled on it, and oh boy, we went to town <clears throat> we did, we named him the alpaca man, no alpacas were seen, but he had, um, well, I don't know if he, he had a beautiful shawl on, so he might be an editor, I don't know. Um, but he had um, a sample, as I always say, if you want to sell your yarn, get a sample. And it was to die for the softness, the drape. Um, oh, it was lovely. And it's, if you want to see, <laughs> if you want to see what the sample was, um, Sundustin, no, Sundustin or something. Um, Mandy of Mouse's Makes podcast has knit several. It's the short sleeve top with the little detail here, and she says it better than me. Um, maybe <laughs> maybe Hannah said her podcast, but anyway, um, it was beautiful. It doesn't matter what was knit, it was beautiful. So, and he had just the yarn just piled up in the different colorways. So, I bought a few skeins, and actually, when Hannah came home, she looked it up. The skeins were twelve pounds each for hundred grams, and on it said show special. And you obviously, mm -hmm. but online they're eighteen ninety five. So good, I'm happy with that. So my first purchases from him. Oh, it's all going to fall on the floor. Um, where are these two? Now that is that's showing up black, but it's not. It's grey, like a what was it name on it? Charcoal, and it is Wit Barrow Charcoal. It's 45% uh, Peruvian alpaca, 35% Falklands merino wool, 20% mulberry silk, 100 grams, 400 meters spun and dyed in the UK. And it is from Town End Yarns. Where's that? I will put it in the show notes, but just in case, I think some people struggle to find the show notes. I mean, look at the drape, look. So this is for me, me to do an ephemeral shawl for myself. Um, We looked at different things. I wanted the red. Uh, I could have bought a sweater quantities in this, quantity in this. And when I found out how much more expensive it is online, I wish I had. But it is just gorgeous. And that's, it's lighter than this. Just maybe a few. No, it's not showing up. Maybe just a wee bit lighter. And that's going to be an ephemeral shawl for me. So at least I'm just going to chuck them behind you without knocking the thing. Then that was all I bought that time round. <laughs> oh, no, 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 it wasn't. Then I bought these two. <clears throat> and yes, the royal blue. I keep buying royal blue. And again, it's the same wit borrow. It's royal, funny enough. Same, you know, composition and same drape. <laughs> So I bought those thinking another shawl, because I mean, there's, sometimes you can get an alpaca and it's a bit itchy. This is, oh, no, 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 beautiful. Um, And I bought those two thinking another shawl. 
or a short sleeve tee. So that was fine, I bought those. But then uh, when we had lunch and came back again, <laughs> somebody I was with may have bought some more. Um, I bought a third one because I thought it gives me the scope of a massive shawl, nice textured shawl, or um, a proper, like a tee with something. So, and I really wish that I had maybe bought something that could go with that in a yoke, but you know what, I think I did okay. So that was five skeins of that. Don't get, don't get your calculator out, sorry. Keep the basket and putting it in, in underneath the tripod, sorry if it's making you a bit sick. Then um, Hannah was, you know, looking at different things and and uh, we kept zooming into the bargain bins. Ev nearly every stall had a bargain basket. So we were making the most of it, definitely were. Then um, we went upstairs for lunch. And um, as we went upstairs, I eyed a tiny little stall, like literally just, you know, maybe two people could have stepped in. And, and when me and the owner was in it, that was nearly, nearly all you could get in. Oh, but it was small but mighty. Oh my goodness. Now I'd never heard of this is a new to me dyer, but I think she was at um she's been at other um shows, but down here we tend to see the same people at, at shows and um I'd never seen her before as the upshot, but she had a bargain. And I mean a bargain. And I don't think she had any superwash. Let me see. Yeah, I think I think nearly all of hers were um non superwash and First of all, I saw my eye zoomed into this. <laughs> oh no, it's not going to show. Look at the shine off it even. And this is um, lemon sorbet. Four plates. Now she had enough of this. She had five of these. So obviously people just don't like lemon. But it's a lemon enough that it's... There's even a halo off it. Can you see it? Well, it's not getting it. It's, it's lemon sorbet as you would think of lemon sorbet. Um, four ply fingering, 100% British blue face Leicester, which I love. Spun in Yorkshire, dyed in Dorset, uh, 350 metres per um, 100 grams. And it was down to £10. So I got three of them. And then I saw this little gem. 50 grams. And this is blossoming, four ply fingering, blue fit, blue face Lester, and 175 grams. And I am going to make a Jimmy Jab. I'll put the picture here. A Jimmy Jab summer tea, although it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be summer summer. I did the test knit for the DK version of it, and I think this is going to be enough. And if I don't have um. No, it should definitely be enough. Um, although it's only 350. I did, I calculated it. I got, I did the whole getting Ravelry up. But that was one thing. Um, a lot of the yarn shows down here, you struggle to get uh, 4G on your phone. And I was able to get it no problem there. So I was able to look up several patterns to make sure that I had enough. But isn't that a gorgeous combination? And it's Bluebell Yarns. Ugh. Ooh, all on the floor. Bluebell Yarns, um, hand dyed British yarn and bluebellyarns.co.uk and she was lovely, she was so helpful and couldn't have been nicer and uh, I just love supporting new dyers and everything but they were in her and I could have got two more I think but I thought leave it for somebody else. So that's those and then we went back down, round the rooms again, and I think Hannah maybe brought, I can't remember, and um, we were walking past Gorgeous Yarns, Caroline, who uh, I bought yarn from at the Liscard uh, Festival, and she called, we were past, we were past her, her um, she specialises in botanical dyeing, she sells these big Kilner jars with all the stuff that you need, um, to, to botanically dye, and sun dye, which wouldn't be much use here today um she's written a book and all sorts um and just a generally nice person and um she called me back like ran after us thought I'd done something and she said are you still in your uh, mustard yellow phase I was like 
What's your yellow face? How very dare you? It's not a face. It's my life. No, it didn't. And I went, well, yes. And she said, come here. And I don't want to hear any argument. Okay. Like Hannah thought, what is going on? Am I going to have to defend Ruth? <laughs> And um, she got down on her hands and knees and she had all her sort of boxes and things un under the table with a nice piece of fabric down over it. And she said, um, I want you to have these. Well, <laughs> she said she dyed them. She had to, one of her favourite things to do is um, ways to dye, but they haven't been that popular or she hasn't been able to sell them. And she gave me one, two, three, four, five, six of these. So it's gorgeous yarns. This is colourway is not going to come up properly. And it's Merino DK. This is so soft. Merino DK, 225 metres per 100 grams. And it's rhubarb root. And it's almost like, I wouldn't say it was mustard. It's almost like a sagey, yellowy green. Sorry, Carla, I'm not going to get the colours right on this. <laughs> but it's not a flat colour. It's got, I won't be able to find any it's got lights and darks. It's got, but it's so, so I don't know. I said to her, if I was to gift this, knit something and gift it, would that be okay? Because I have a friend who loves kind of sages. Um, I wish I had something to compare it to. <laughs> don't really. But anyway, so that was a gift from Caroline. Um, thank you so, so much. It fairly boosted my, it filled up my bag. <laughs> She gave me the whole um thing in this lovely so that was some that was some gift and again as I say gorgeous yarns um was that maybe it is it I don't know so I think something texture there's plenty there something maybe with texture or even adding um I have another a mini skein that she gave me a while ago you can see this one maybe I'll show you this one that's um the lights and darks can you see yeah. It doesn't, it's not just all the one colour. There's lovely, other lovely colours, or lovely tones in it. Um, so we'll see um, what I knit that up into. She didn't put no pressure on me at all. Um, but if I've got six times 225 metres, that gives me a good wee, a good wee bit for something textured or so soft, it would be lovely. Although I don't think this is good for right my neck. But yes, I have a friend in mind who will get, but that will be... Not this year, I don't think. Although, sure, we've only a month and a bit to go. Um, thank you very much, Caroline. So go and check. If you would like to dye your own yarn, but you don't want to use, you know, chemical dyes and all that sort of stuff, check out Gorgeous Yarns. I should have it on here. She doesn't have her... I presume it's .co.uk. I will have a look and I'll put it in the show notes. Check her out. She's local um, to me. Oh, ah, yeah, Cornwall. <laughs> then... Uh, I had bought, I'll put it here and I need to look up the name of it because it's, um, it's called the Christantima, Christantima, Christantima by um, Anise Sang. I've got one of Anise's um, shawls on the needles at the minute and I'm not progressing very quickly with it but this absolutely might go on and be finished before the original one. I just fell in love with it straight away and um, I went through my stash and I found um, there's a large and a small, but even the small is still a good big size. So it's either three of a sort of semi-solid and two of a variegated. I mean, it's no rules, you can do whatever you want, but that's what everybody seems to have done. And I didn't really have anything that had enough of those colours. And I had, <clears throat> I had a um, beautiful, two beautiful skeins of um, West Greenloft yarn that my husband bought me two Christmases ago and I meant to take them with me to colour match but that would be far too organised and then I had another skein from um, the Camel's yarn and I didn't take it either and you know you're there going was that the right colour but this match with the no so I just thought start new and Bluebell Yarns had an offer again if you buy three um three skeins you get percentage off and because I'd bought offer before she gave me another wee bit off so like small businesses you just don't need to do that so thank you very much these are the colours so um you saw the the um it's almost a fan, feather and fan kind of thing so these are the solids that I got it is steel but again it's not a it's not a flat colour 
they are just beautiful and this is 100% uh, Falkland Coradale so the twist is gorgeous in it and then <clears throat> my coordinating colour <laughs> is this again Bluebell Yarns so there is some steel in this it's just going to be as I say, she gave me quite a discount. I took cash. I always take cash so then I don't go over. Um, I went, I think, £7 over because I bought lunch. <laughs> um, but I am happy with that. Again, it's just, just the colours. Oh, beautiful. I could have bought so many things from that stall. Um, it was just beautiful. And then... Um, I have some, my last but not least, um, I have my some um, yarn in my stash from, where's the, it's Dunga, Don, this one here, <laughs> is it Dundaga, Dundaga, it's 100% Latvian sheep, um, I got it online, it's a variegated, you know, um, yarn and um, I did message the owner of the shop to ask, um, not mention the shop, um, to ask if she had, before I bought the yarn, to ask if she had a solid that would go with it. I messaged her on Instagram, I emailed her and I never heard back from her. So um, I wouldn't buy from them again. But it's got a very large um, meterage. It, well, it's 213 grams for um, £14. So I think that's very good. And I found the, so it's about a lace weight. Um, it's 420 metres per 100 grams. It's not a lace weight, ignore me. Um, so it's really, really meaty for what you get to go about the solid. But if you've been on my Instagram this week, you'll have seen me asking for help to get the smell of diesel out of my yarn. That's all I can describe it as. Um, I know it's got spinning oil. It says it's got spinning oil. But the other two, you can smell a wee bit of oil, but it's mostly just sheepy. Well, this one... <laughs> I couldn't even I couldn't even put it in the same bag as my other yarn. It was so stinky. Didn't realize until I got it into the you know closed environment of the car. This isn't the sellers. The seller sold all sorts of yarn. It's not. Um, I'll show you the seller. It's not her fault. This is this is the seller. I've never heard of this this one either. She had a lot of really really different yarns, um, like linens and things like that, um, and in small quantities as well. And there's loads of people. Um, but this was on the bot. It's um knitting and sewing accessories, so she'd lace and she'd um threads and things. But this was on the very, nearly on the floor, you know, the basket on the floor, and I immediately zoomed in because I thought perfect. Well, thank you very much, who everybody who said use well. You said Dawn dish soap. We don't have that here in the UK, so just use good old fairy, um, very liquid. Work to treat. I tried soak, I tried ordinary water, but I didn't want it to felt. I was really scared it would felt because 100% wool. Um, I tried, um, somebody said hair conditioner. So people said, no, don't use hair conditioner. I didn't use hair conditioner. I used fairy liquid. And this is, it's still a bit dump is why I was good. This is the beauty. It's darker than that. What? Oh, it's a trend. Still a bit dump on the bottom. It's been hanging in my shower for two days, no, from yesterday. And this is the, oh, the different so much better it's not as bright as that it's a it's a wine color I'm so scared it would felt but I think I got away with it and um I was really glad to get that sorted because ugh, I was scared to put it in with moustache really was um so there's 200 grams 213 grams there and you'll see that at some point with I can see it from here but can I go and get it will I go and get it is that really professional really professional excuse me as I as I move <laughs> There we go. Oh, sorry, my my uh, upper body in your face. So let me put this down. Rustling. So this is the yarn that I had. It is also Dunga, Dunga, 200 grams. And I think this goes well. So I'm very happy that I got it and you'll see something spectacular. I mean, this just smells of sheep, but there's obviously you can feel there is, you know, um, the, so I don't know what happened. Did this get dropped in the floor or something? I don't know. But anyway, thank you so, so much to everybody 
who gave me the tips that um, that was to do. And actually, I think in the future, even for, you know, um, colour work and everything, I might just use really liquid. Um, several dyers and several spinners uh, gave me those wee tips. So thank you very, very much. And um, that's my haul. It's not, not nothing, sure it's not, but I got my money's worth. I've got plans. I had so much fun. Thank you very much to everybody who came up and said hello. And I just chuffed a bit with uh, meeting everybody. It was just so nice. So I came home and my husband had, you know, made dinner, you know, poured a jar of stuff over chicken, you know, and I sat down and said, it, it just serve me. I, you know, famous podcaster here. It didn't last. <laughs> they were like, shut up, mum. You know, <laughs> just, they didn't, uh, it was just a joke, obviously. And it was back down to uh, earth <laughs> very quickly with a bang <laughs> when I got back home. But that's my wee day out with lovely Hannah. And uh, we had such good fun and um, definitely would go again, definitely recommend it. And uh, yep, good time had by all. Very, very quickly at the very end, if you stuck with me, you're great. I wanted to show you a couple of yarns. There's rustling, sorry, because I keep all my yarn in plastic bags. Um, I wanted to show you some of the things that are still in my shop or, you know, my uh, Ruth Loves to Knit D-Stash um, on Instagram. And all you have to do is just put sold under the picture and then I'll get in touch with you. So the first one I want to show you is from some Zakami Yarns. You see, it's beautiful. I'm not sure I captured, got it captured in the photographs very well and this there's two and this is Azaria 75% BFL 25% mid brown masham and there's 400 meters sock fingering it non superwash with the tones in that if they don't sell I'll use them but um if anybody's interested in that so that's um just UK because I just don't think it's worth um, you pay in postage to the US for unless you really, really, really want to. Then I've got uh, four of these from, um, sorry, Russelly Russell. You'll see the prices and um, they're all very, very discounted. And uh, this is Rain Cloud and Sage. Um, it was 16 dollars No, it wasn't because I got it in a sale. Um, it's Nord and it's 350 metres of merino texel sourced in germany and the color word colorway is zenf s-e-n-f and that's exactly the color <laughs> the big chunky chunky skeins aren't they that's exactly the color i think it's too yellowy for my complexion so four of those so you definitely it's a sweaters quantity or a shawl, large shawl quantity um have a look at the price of those as i say i'll send them in these plastic bags as well then there's only two more, don't worry. There's more on the there's um project bags, not because I don't love them. I've just maybe got a few. Um all lightly used, no marks, no anything on them. This is um Loft from Brooklyn Tweed. You can see, oh, look at that. Don't think I captured that well in the photographs either. Look at the wee, can you see the wee tufts of blue in there? Oh, it's not really coming up. These are literally as light as a feather. Oh, can I get it nice? Uh, there's two of those and those and that the colorway is faded quilt and it's 275 yards. Obviously, it's American um, brand. <clears throat> and I have two of those loft oh, from Brooklyn Tweed. Brooklyn Tweed. Blues and teal. teal. See the, oh, that's it. See the wee teal? Gorgeous. And then last but not least. Sorry. Rustling. I have four of these beauties. Now I've had this in my stash for quite a while and they, I don't think she's dying anymore. She used to be in the UK and she's moved back to Portugal where she's from. It's hand dyed by Diana in Scotland. Uh, Love bug yarns. Oh, look at this. Again I don't think I captured it well on the a four of the sweater quantity of this. Again if I don't use it, if you don't sell it I'll just use it. And the colourway is Meadow Rain and it's Platinum Sock 4 Ply. 425 meters so a good a good yardage uh, superwash merino nylon and again i've massively um reduced see there's oh, i just think it's gorgeous again if it doesn't sell I'll, I'll use it but i just thought i would see if anybody wanted to share the love so almost to my normal length of podcast <laughs> um 
there's a few more bits on there there's some um uh, commercial yarn all of um any proceeds anything i earn or make i will be sending 10 percent to lamb hospital in bangladesh the hospital i support with my ad revenue um so and maybe even a wee bit more i know one person bless them uh said they couldn't buy any yarn but sent a small donation for lamb instead um i also have recently that well this week or last week for some yarn been sent a donation through my kofi for lamb i i always everything that comes into the well, kofi i send to lamb um, and we're able to really support them well um things cost a lot less in bangladesh so our money goes a lot further and that's just a, a privilege that i can um help out in any way um as you know i was a midwife there and i know i know the need um that there is there so that's it that's my yarn haul um please um if you don't like this thing don't leave a comment that it's not nice just move on <laughs> um i was gifted the money and i spent it on myself for a change <laughs> although i think i spent it on myself last time too um and um it makes me very happy and uh, my kids are fed <laughs> and dressed and um i'm not i don't feel i'm wasting um the gift that was sent to me although i don't know how i would explain to my lovely 87 year old father-in-law that i bought yarn but he doesn't ask any questions anyway that's enough waffle 51 minutes um i hope you've had a lovely wee time with me um maybe not the usual thing you've had to look at the screen maybe a wee bit more than you normally do to see the nice yarn any questions just get in touch ruth loves to knit um at gmail.com or ruth loves to knit podcast on instagram i try and put the names of the um yarns down below i don't know how to do links but sure we're all adults we can copy and paste and um i will um see you i think probably next week if i can manage it to um show you actual projects because we've had a bit of progress on a few things started a few things and and um we're we're getting a few things done and now with the dark nights evenings are are mostly spent knitting so there's a good bit of progress on some things apart from my never-ending bottom-up jumper anyway waffling now so i'll say goodbye god bless and keep on knitting bye